So if you think about past breast reductions, you've probably seen us do or other doctors do. They always have that anchor incision where it's got that vertical scar that's a little more obvious than you want it to be. Well, now we're getting to that. And we'll explain why that is a good procedure to do in this patient, why she's a candidate, and you know what are the trade-offs. Typically, breast reduction requires an incision around the areola, a vertical incision, and a horizontal incision to take out the excess skin, take out excess breast tissue, and then give a nice we can just skip this vertical incision and just make the incision here and then push and then remove excess breast tissue here and move this nipple and the underlying breast tissue up on. With this specific type of no vertical scar breast reduction, uh, insurance does not cover it, so you would have to pay out of pocket if you are a candidate for it. And also keep in mind, we do send the breast tissue to the pathologist just to make sure there's no cancer. Like the chance of finding cancer in a breast reduction specimen is less than 0.02%, so not very common, but we just want to be safe. Again, if you want to check price and go to buildmybod.com and then look for Pacific Heights Plastic Surgery and you scroll down the page and I'll just skip down for you here and there it is, no vertical scar breast reduction. You just add it to your wish list, submit the wish list and you can check pricing. So just kind of imagine this, we're going to remove the excess skin here and then we're going to stuff all this breast tissue up underneath this skin flap and bring this nipple out through here. So what I do with my breast reduction is I actually infuse two methods solution, mostly just so that it'll constrict the blood vessel so there's less bleeding, because then I cut the breast tissue out with the knife rather than using the bovie so there's way less smoke. Just to be clear, we're not doing any liposuction to the breast, we're just infusing the two methods so it'll reduce bleeding so I can cut the tissue out with the scalpel rather than bobing it out and making a ton of smoke. We're going to start our incision now. I'm going to de-epithelize or remove all this skin and then push all the breast tissue up underneath the flap of the skin up here. So remember all that tumescent solution we put in? That's why I'm able to cut through all this breast tissue with the knife without it bleeding because of the epinephrine. We're just still elevating our skin flap off of the breast right here. And Tony Bennett came out with Tony Bennett show. We played my my Tony Bennett impersonator, Tony But here you are. To reduce the breast, and I keep all the inner aspect of the breast tissue so we give her nice cleavage. So you can watch me now cutting away this breast tissue, and again, it doesn't bleed because I've injected that tumescent solution. So we're just cutting away the breast tissue. This is the reduction part, and that excess skin we removed over here. That's the lift part. Yes, I'd like to make a claim. What do you want to claim, sir? Sorry, but your home insurance doesn't cover. From 0 to 2% of the time, there is So the only real drawback to doing this no vertical scar technique is that since we're not removing this excess skin here, which would create a scar, that leaves flapped over the skin, the breast tissue's underneath. I'm cutting out the hole and we'll bring out the nipple here in just a second. So here you go, you can see kind of the almost finished result. We have some staples here that we're going to replace. But you can see this lifted breast, the nipple coming out here, and then this breast is obviously still. So we have a viewer that is chatting, asking about why they should do this sort of a breast reduction or breast lift over a vampire breast lift. Okay, so a vampire breast lift is all goes back to PRP, which is platelet-rich plasma. That's when we take blood from the patient's arm and we spin it down, remove all the red blood cells, and then we just have the plasma left, which provides growth factors and it helps develop collagen, and so you can use it and knee joints to help with healing knee joints. You can use it for the facelift to help develop collagen in the face to fill in my parentheses lines. So the idea that behind the vampire breast lift is you develop collagen to tighten up the skin to lift the breast. The only problem is that injecting PRP or the vampire, what's the vampire part of the vampire breast lift is that it doesn't really work well enough or long term. So yes, maybe there is some development of collagen in the breast, that theoretically could lift the breast, but collagen isn't the only thing that lifts the breast. There's other ligaments and things that lift the breast. So by just injecting that, it's not going to give you the result you want. And I know I sound like a surgeon who wants you to just do surgery, but do you really want to waste money on something that's not going to last you for very long or even 
work at all versus doing something that you know will work and will last for you, even though it may be a little more expensive. The other way to look at it is that by doing repeated injections of the PRP or the vampire breast lift, you're going to spend way more than a breast lift surgically, and it's never going to give you the results you're looking for. Let's see how much our right breast tissue weighs. Two pounds, three ounces. Left breast tissue. 1.5 pounds. The patient's right breast was a lot larger than the left one, so it is normal and expected that she have more breast tissue weight from the right than the left breast.